In this first lesson, I will show you how I set up my rendering settings using 3D Studio Max and V-Ray. I personally use exactly the same settings no matter the type of project that I have to deal with. Which means that either I have to do a living room render with big windows or a small bathroom with no windows, the rendering settings I will apply are the same. Let's start. Go to the menu Rendering, Render Setup. The first thing that we need to do is to set V-Ray as our renderer. Go to the Render section and select V-Ray Next. The menus now change and adjust to the V-Ray ones. Go to the V-Ray tab. Go to the Global Switches rollout and disable Hidden Lights. Let me show you what will happen if you don't disable this option. This is the bathroom that we will be working on. I have placed this pendant over here and let me produce a render to see how it looks. So, you can see that this pendant casts light on the wall and on the vanity. I'm not really sure if I like it and I would like to hide it to see how my render will look without it. In order to hide it, I will select it, right click and select Hide Selection. Let me produce another render. Although we have hidden the pendant in the light source, it still casts light. But if we go to the Render Setup dialog box and disable hidden lights, then the hidden lights won't cast light anymore. Let's re-render to confirm it. So, my advice is to always have this option disabled, especially if you are a beginner, since while you will be working on your project, you might hide a few lights to do your testing and you will get confused why you see lighted areas where there are no lights. Now, go to the Image Sampler Anti-Aliasing Rollout. First, let me explain to you what anti-aliasing is. When we draw a line using any software, AutoCAD, Photoshop, 3D Studio Max, if this line is horizontal or vertical, then it appears on our screen as a perfect line. But if this line is inclined, then you can see its pixels when you zoom in. So, in this rollout, we choose the algorithm with which we will improve this phenomenon. I personally prefer Bucket over Progressive and in the Bucket Image Sampler rollout I set Minimum Subdivisions to 1 and Maximum Subdivisions to 4 for my draft renders. While for my final renders I will set Maximum Subdivisions to 8 or 12 or 24. Let's now see in our example what those values mean. I select Bucket and let's start by disabling the maximum subdivisions and render. Do you see how our vanity looks, the pixels? Now, I will enable maximum subdivisions and set them to 4. V-Ray now tries to smooth the edges so that we don't see the pixels. The bigger the value we type in maximum subdivisions, the smoother our render will look. But what you should always have in mind is that the bigger our values, the more time we will need to produce our render. Let's now go to the color mapping rollout. In simple terms, in this rollout we adjust how bright the burn spots of our project will look. Let me keep the default values and produce a render. Take a close look at the sink. It looks like it's burned here and instead of a white vanity, it renders kind of orange. 
Now, let's adjust the burn value and set it to 0 0.5 instead of 1 and render. Now, there is not a right or wrong value here, just what you want to achieve as a final result. I personally prefer to avoid having burn spots in my renders, so to sum up, in the color mapping rollout I keep Reinhardt, I keep 1 in the multiplier value and I set burn value to 0.5. Now go to the GI tab. Open the global illumination rollout. Some of the terms that follow are pretty complicated and have a mathematical background, so what I will try to do is just simplify everything. As primary engine, select irradiance map, and as secondary engine, select light cache. Those are algorithms that calculate how the light casts and spreads in a room. Go to the irradiance map rollout. Here we have some templates, presets that you can choose from whether we want to produce a draft render or a final one. I personally always choose the low preset and there are two parameters that I adjust, the subdivisions and the interpolation samples. Those, those two adjust the quality of the scattering of the light. And more specifically, the higher those values, the better the result we will get. The default values are 50 for the subdivisions and 20 for the interpolation samples, which is a good combination for our draft renders. Let's produce a render to see the result we get. Let me now set those values to 1 and 1 and do a crop render over here to see the difference. So, do you see what is happening? The higher the subdivisions, the better the simulation of the reflection of the light we get. Instead of 1, let's set 10 and re-render. You can see how the quality improves by increasing the value. In simple terms, the interpolation sample shows how well defined the pixels are. Let's set it to 10 instead of 1 and re-render. I hope that now it's clear how these values work. What you should have in mind is that the default values of 15 and 20 are good for our draft renders and you can adjust those to 70 and 35 for your final renders. We have more or less the same philosophy with the subdivisions in the light cast rollout. I set subdivisions to 200 for my draft renders and 1000 for my final ones. Finally, go to the Render Elements tab. Click on the Add button and select V-Ray Denoiser. And click OK. As its name implies, V-Ray Denoiser reduces the noise of a render. What do we mean by noise? It's those dots that you see in a render when a surface doesn't look smooth. V-Ray, V-Ray Denoiser smooths these surfaces. The truth is that it also kind of blurs the final result and we lose details, but we gain substantially in rendering time. If you don't want to use Denoiser, in order to improve the noise of a render, you need to increase some of the values we already talked about. More specifically, go to the V-Ray tab, go to the Bucket Image Sampler rollout and set maximum subdivisions to 24 and noise threshold to 0 0.007.
let's render again. Now, the rendering time has increased substantially and I personally don't believe that the quality is that improved compared to the time needed, but that's up to you to decide which workflow you prefer. I personally prefer to apply the noiser and leave my values low to render faster. Now, regarding the rendering settings we just analyzed, you don't need to set them from scratch every time you start a new project. You can save those settings as a template and load this template. To save the settings, click on the arrow next to the preset and select Save Preset. Choose where you want to save it, type the desired name and click Save. Now, every time you will be starting working on a new project, you just need to go to the menu Rendering, Render Setup, click on Preset and select Load Preset and choose the file you saved. That's all. Thank you.